The Committee on Academic Freedom laid its plans for a deliberate consideration of the long-range problem of developing a coherent philosophy to serve as a guide for a policy that would encourage the responsible exercise of maximum political freedom on the Berkeley campus. The succession of events that have occurred during the past three weeks, however, have given this issue an urgency which called the original plan of operation that had been adopted by the committee into question. Under the circumstances, the committee believes that it has a responsibility to pre present the substance of the propositions that make up the major part of its report at this time with certain questions of elaboration and implementation to be dealt with at a later date. With this in mind, we propose the following motion. <clears throat> there is a brief preamble. In order to end the present crisis, to establish the confidence and trust essential to the restoration of normal university life, and to create a campus environment that encourages students to exercise free and responsible citizenship in the university and in the community at large, the Committee on Academic Freedom of the Berkeley Division of the Academic Senate moves the following propositions. One, that there shall be no university disciplinary measures against members or organizations of the university community for activities prior to December 8th connected with the current controversy over political speech and activity. Two, that the time, place, and manner of conducting political activity on the campus shall be subject to reasonable regulation to prevent interference with the normal functions of the university. That the regulations now in effect for this purpose shall remain in effect provisionally pending a future report of the Committee on Academic Freedom concerning the minimal regulations necessary. That the content of speech or advocacy, this is section three, pardon me. That the content of speech or advocacy should not be restricted by the university. Off-campus student political activities shall not be subject to university regulation. On-campus advocacy or organi organization of such activities shall be subject only to such limitations as may be imposed under Section 2. Four, that future disciplinary measures in the area of political activity shall be determined by a committee appointed by and responsible to the Berkeley Division of the Academic Senate. Five, that the division urge the adoption of the following of the foregoing policies and call on all members of the university community to join with the faculty in its efforts to restore the university to its normal functions. Mr. Chairman, I so move. You, you've heard the motion. Is there a second? Like Professor Tussman. I'm Joseph Tussman. I am the chairman of the Department of Are Philosophy. You are you making a second? Making a second. Thank you. And one of the working committee of five chairmen, which acted recently on behalf of all the chairmen on the Berkeley campus. I wish to second the motion which the Committee on Academic Freedom has placed before us. The crisis through which we are passing involves at least three sets of problems. First, there are problems resulting from recent attempts to resolve what is essentially a moral and spiritual crisis by the use of radically inappropriate means. The attempt to deal coercively and punitively with problems of mind and spirit. In this field, we may hope, I believe, that the spirit of amnesty will now prevail. Second, there are problems arising out of the quality and scope of university regulations governing speech, assembly, and political or social action by members of the academic community. And third, there are problems arising from fundamental defects in the living constitution of the university, in the relations between students, faculty, and administration, in the general structure of authority. Permanent peace and health will not be easily attained, but the propositions before us are a good beginning. I think they are all necessary. Yes, Professor McCloskey, will you come forward so that you can be heard? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I am one of the drafters and sponsors of the original resolution, which was submitted to the Committee on Academic Freedom for their consideration, and which now 
in slightly revised form is before the Senate for its consideration. We believe that its adoption will bring us closer, perhaps safely, through to a solution. No conflict of these proportions could take place without generating feelings of bitterness and disappointment, the desire to punish or to vindicate. But the time for recriminations, I think, has passed. It no longer matters where the major fault lies, who is right and who is wrong, or whether the greatest sins have been committed by the students, the administration, or the faculty. What matters now is how by what means we can survive. It is my hope, and I think I speak for all those who have worked to develop this resolution in its original form, that we can now put aside our differences and that we can all manage students, faculty, university officials, and regents to strike an attitude of generosity and magnanimity so that the damage might be repaired and so that we can all return to work. It is in this spirit, Mr. Chairman, that I wish to second the motion for the adoption of this resolution. My name is Foyer, Departments of Philosophy and Social Science. The other one? Pardon. And I am introducing an amendment and speaking in defense of this amendment. The amendment is to paragraph three of the proposed motion. First line of paragraph three, to alter it as follows, that the content of speech or ad advocacy on this campus, provided that it is directed to no immediate act of force or violence, should not be restricted by the university. And then in the last line of paragraph three, to alter as may be imposed under section two to as have been heretofore stated. I should like to explain why I have moved this amendment. It does not strike at the philosophy of the free speech movement as I understand that philosophy as it has been expounded by some of its proponents. Insofar as the free speech movement is sincerely committed to nonviolence, it has nothing to fear from this amendment, which is aimed to keep from university, from advocacy on university premises and grounds, those who are advocating the immediate commitment of acts of force and violence. The particular resolution which we will enact will probably become a model for many of the universities from here to the East Coast and including the state of Mississippi. As this resolution stands now without an amendment, it would allow a student Ku Klux Klan chapter to organize itself on campuses to carry on meetings at which they would advocate, plan, and organize actions for defacing Jewish synagogues, Negro and Catholic churches, and they would claim the protection of the university sanctuary for these acts of speech, advocacy, and organization. Unless we have a provision, some amendment, which will make it clear that we do not condone this sort of action or behavior, we are opening the way for every extremist and crackpot organization which can then enter upon this campus, advocate its most immediate measures without fear of any action on the part of the university. Professor Tenbrock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> on behalf of the Committee on Academic Freedom, <clears throat> I should like to express our opposition to this proposed amendment. We should be concerned with the intellectual and spiritual task of running a university where anybody can say what it, whatever is on his mind and other, and other people can listen to him and think about it and make up their minds whether they agree or not. This resolution is not just a declaration of principle, this, this proposal that uh, Dr. Foyer is making. 
It opens up to university regulation, what we are here saying should not be regulated by the university in any manner, shape, or form. What other people do by way of regulation belongs to their jurisdiction and not to ours. So the Committee on Academic Freedom is opposed to this amendment to our resolutions. I'm going to recognize Professor Carl Landauer. Carl Landauer Economics. I would like to support the FOIA amendment, the uh, position that we can permit the organization of any lawless action on the campus. That is, the campus organization of any lawless action in the community uh, is, in uh, my opinion, tenable only if at the same time we recognize the moral right, I'm not talking about legal rights, but the moral right of the police to come to our campus and suppress this activity. This moral right I'm not willing to concede uh, to uh, the general law enforcement agencies. Professor Chamberlain. Mr. Chairman. I wish to speak against the amendment. I feel that many of the, of the actions that our students would be most proud of might uh, run into difficulty with the, with the FOIA amendment. I regard the occupation of Sproul Hall as a use of force, but not a use of violence. I suggest that the amendment is not proper as formulated. I suggest that we reject it. I recognize Professor Salznick. Philip Selznick, Professor of Sociology. We are not in the business here of regulating speech. That is to say, the content of speech. Our problem is to find a policy that is tenable, that can be defended, that can be implemented, that can find its way into a series of regulations and uh, governing provisions that we can all live with and that are proper to a university. The university has all the resources it needs to deal with disorderly behavior on this campus. It can deal with disorderly behavior by invoking its own rules. It can deal with disorderly behavior by invoking the rules of a civil authority. It retains the right to file charges against anyone who breaks the law. Our problem is not the control of acts, but of speech. And we are moving here. I sincerely hope we shall, we shall conclude here a movement toward a policy that protects the content of speech and that assumes the risks of that protection. We want to invoke the new policy, the policy we should have had all along, the policy we are adopting not out of concession to pressure, not out of submission to outside forces, but because I think at long last we are ready to adopt a policy that should have been with us through all these times. We adopt this policy not only because it is consistent with the Constitution of the United States. We adopt this policy because it is the most fitting policy for a great university. I sincerely hope that we will vote down the FOIA amendment and give our full support to the Committee on Academic Freedom. All right. I recognize this gentleman here. Charles Zemack, Physics. Let no one believe that questions of law and order and discipline are being solved by the motion before us. We are changing the battlefield. The terrain of the new battlefield will also be difficult. Now then, there is something very fine and noble about a community like this going forth to take on responsibilities, not haggling about whether one is forced to do so or whether the responsibilities might be left on someone else. 
there will also be something comforting about being able to look back on one's work and being able to say, I did my duty, I did my best. Finally, there is the hope, and much depends on this, that students who love the university will be able to find something final about this measure. In the spirit of these sentiments, I shall vote wholeheartedly for this motion. But let's not kid ourselves that the future is all peaches and cream. I'm going to now put that main motion so that everyone can, without any question, know that a vote was taken on it. That is the motion which is now unamended by the uh, presented by Professor Garbarino, Chairman of the Academic Freedom Committee. I ask that those all in favor of the motion please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, no. no. The motion is carried. If there is a call for a division, we will have a count. All right, well, you heard the call. The secretary, please announce the vote. Mr. Chairman, the vote is 824 I, 115 nay.